you clicked play again. Well, if you wanted to hear all about Suicide Squad, this is the episode for you. We sat down to unbox all of the wonderful goodness in DC's newest film, and later make some comparisons to a certain Marvel Netflix series. And, of course, we wrap it up with a topical who would win. Still listening? Cool. Also, be warned, this episode is 100% spoilers. Ready? Jingle! Yeah, so so this is epi- technically episode one? Yes, right? yeah. that's correct. Episode one, because the last one was episode ground zero, okay. wherein we were all drunk and should not have done that. Ultimate edition. But somebody clicked play again, so Godspeed. Um, what were we? What were we gonna? We were gonna. Well, obviously, Suicide Squad. Movie. Jessica right. Jones. We've got some Jessica Jones and Suicide Squad, Joker, Purple mm-hmm. Man, Harley Quinn, Jessica Jones comparisons. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, let's talk about the the elephant in the room. Mm-hmm. No, um, no, just the, the biggest pop culture thing that's been happening uh, over the past couple weeks is Sausage Suicide. Park. What? Mandela effect. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Suicide Squad. Peace Dragon. The Return of Peace Dragon. The reboot. It's. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I like it. it they recast off. the dragon. And, um, <laughs> it is no. out the gate. Uh, <laughs> that would be Suicide Squad. Uh, Suicide Squad. Yeah, who Since wants to start you this? Two I have, I you have, two have actually seen it. Seen it so Samantha yeah. has seen it. Yes. Brian doesn't doesn't want to see it. <laughs> not yet. Um, so not I'll yet. let me let me Get let it. me let me lead off with yeah. I did not want to see it <laughs> at all. Mm-hmm. I was staunchly against seeing it because of what I thought were. Uh, terrible desi- design choices, mm-hmm. and the trailers left nothing to what the story would be. Yep. Um, and I was out, fully out. But then it it dawned on me as I sat around waiting for reviews of this movie, and after I got real bummed out about not being able to see a free screening of it early, <laughs> um, that I was waiting for people to tell me whether or not I should enjoy DC. And to me, that was horseshit. Because in a lot of ways, I'm, I mean, as you can look at my uh, shrine here, I'm fully invested in DC. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. And, <laughs> I don't see anything. And uh, it, it, it kind of struck me as maybe I'm the voice that some other people are waiting for to hear whether or not they should see this movie. So then I wanted to see that movie. Because yeah. I didn't want to... I didn't wanna, I was waiting for somebody else to right. tell me it was worthy of seeing when I feel like there might have been... And I don't know if it's true, but people tend to trust my judgment on that kind of thing. Yeah. So I was like, well, what good would it be if I was like, don't see it because I didn't want to pay for it or whatever. Right, right. So I went opening weekend, and I, and I saw it literally before anybody else who claimed that they were so interested in seeing it because yeah. <laughs> there are still people who said that they wanted to see it who haven't seen it <laughs> yet. So... I was out, and then I was in hard, and what I came to find out from those trailers and the design decisions was it's largely a character story, and it's not necessarily plot-driven anyway. Yeah. Um, and the plot didn't matter until it had to. Yep. I um, agree. It was, there's a lot of character movement, and the, but also the thing is, is that DC's not giving you uh, origin films. Mm-hmm. The way Marvel has spent, what, nine years now building I, origin films? I don't feel like they're selling it to me until until recently. Right. Well, that's know? the thing because you want to see them all in the act two. You want to see them all doing... We, we know that he's Iron Man. We know that he's Captain yeah. America. We want to see them fighting things and doing stuff and being those people, not figuring out that they're those people and then learning how to do it. DC's decided... Creatively, as a as a studio, it seems mm-hmm. they know who these people are. We're just going to drop them in and let it happen, and then mm-hmm. the chips fall where people are like, "I don't understand the character motivation." And it's like, "Well, you know the character, right? You've yeah. been reading DC for seventy five years, yeah. right?" So they're not doing origin movies, and this is what you get: you get a movie where everybody's kind of dropped in, everybody's kind of established. You get little hints of backstory, and then they just keep moving. And and yet, I was still. Hung up in the emotional. Oh, it was in, wait. In, yeah, super emotional. Super and emotional. They didn't have an origin story. They were yeah. like, they made you care this about guy them. In, did this? And yeah. I was crying. The yeah. way the way uh, 
Pauly talked about Diablo was I cried. They gave that guy maybe had thirty minutes solo mm-hmm. screen time wow. in that movie, and by the time his arc is finished, from beginning to end, like you get it, and then everything else happens, and then you get a little bit. Mm-hmm. Should we take the moment to put a spoiler alert? Or do we even bother doing that anymore? No. Because it's like if you're in, you're in. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be talking about, we're yeah. going to be talking about spoilers. So, um, yeah. yeah. So, so Diablo is a character who, uh, who is a, is Hold a, on, let me get the reggae horn. <laughs> is a, he's a pyrotechnic, I guess. Is that how you would? He, no, he's possessed Pyro- by. Pyrokinetic. Pyrokinetic. I he, thought he was possessed by a. Well, well, that's the thing. Oh, okay. We eventually find that out. But okay. he's a pyrokinetic since birth. And as he got older, he got stronger. And he used it to kind of gain a rep in the streets because he was like a I mean if you've seen the, the character right, model yeah. he's a full blown street thug yeah um he had a wife and kids and and they wound up dying and he wound up in jail right mm-hmm. and that's what we find out at the beginning and come to find out he lost control of himself because he got angry right and blew his house up and killed his wife and child the children in his house reasonable yes yeah, he murdered them and that's why he was in Bell Rev in Louisiana, where all of the other suicide squatters right. were held. <laughs> um, but very, very. And by the end of that, you're just like, "Holy shit!" Because the weight that they give that, himself he, anymore after no. That, so. so there's a really cool scene where uh, Will Smith's Deadshot is looking at him and is just trying to push every button. So he brings up his wife and his kids. Mm-hmm. He's being like real shitty to him. He's pushing them like like because they're in the middle of danger. Yeah, and he he's like, "We help. need your help." Right, and and he's like, "I don't do that anymore." And right. the Hulk needs to get angry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And Will Smith pushes him over the edge, and he uses his fire and just kills everything that's in the room. Now right. imagine if Harley Quinn said to him, "Don't go green." That's <laughs> <You know? laughs> lame as fuck. <laughs> um, but then everybody's kind of oh. surprised at his at his. <laughs> at his strength or his power and then he just kind of walks away and Harley Quinn like kisses him and like walks past him like thank you kisses him on the cheek and keeps moving Mm -hmm. and I was just like first again that's a great portrayal of Mm -hmm. her but and then at the end of it um in the inevitable fight with the Enchantress who was the big bad of the movie right that the trailers did not let you know that at all Mm -hmm. um he winds up losing all control and and transforming into the Diablo. The Diablo, <laughs> which is uh, apparently an, an old ancient thing that is what is similar to the thing that has um, possessed June Moon. So the yeah. Enchantress, yeah. They, yeah. They, so, they, so the thing that made June Moon the Enchantress, mm-hmm. there's something similar to that that right. exists. Basically, if this was Dungeons and Dragons, they all speak Abyssal. Okay. <laughs> They're all from the same realm. Yeah. The, the yeah. Upside Down. Okay. <laughs> Why are we not talking about that? <laughs> um, um, so he lo- he gets crazy. He's like, you want to you wanna see who I really am or whatever? So apparently he knew this all along. Right. Yeah. But obviously did play his cards close to the vest. Turns into this enormous... Um, the avatar tiki monster. I don't like. That's kind of what he looked like, Entity. but it was on fire. Yeah, yeah. and fought uh, Incubus, which right. is Enchantress's brother, right? Mm-hmm. Because she's succubus, right? Um, and he fights him to the death and sacrifices himself for the group, right? So technically speaking, at the end of that he's movie, hero. Diablo's dead, and he's the hero. Yeah, but there's a lot of other fallout. Mm-hmm. But that's that. That is literally 20 minutes screen time, maybe mm-hmm. total, on just yeah, that. That's, that's awesome. Phenomenal. He redeemed himself, yeah. and that's all he wanted to do. Yeah. That made me cry. Yeah, I, there's so much. Um, well, just really quick, Captain Boomerang was hilarious. I liked him. There, he was funny, he right? Was funny. He was funny. Yes. He wasn't meant to be anything other than funny. He was the comic relief, and I appreciate that. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Um, the scene where you see him crack the crack the beer, and like that is right as shit is going down. <laughs> so he's like trying to kind of escape still. Because the the thing that they do in the movie is uh, they put plot devices in their necks. Right. And (laughs) um, if you try to escape at any point, um, Mm -hmm. you'll die. By Slipknot. Yeah, well, that's what happens to Slipknot. Captain Boomerang kind of is like, hey, listen, when all this shit starts going down, why don't me and you just... It's fake. It's not real. Let's just get the fuck out of here when shit starts going down. And Slipknot's Mm like, all right. (laughs) So shit starts going down, and Captain Boomerang looks at him like, 
all right, and Slipknot does what he does with ropes and whatever, and Rick Flag turns around, and Joel Kinnaman's just like, and hits the yeah. button on his thing, and Slipknot's neck explodes, and he's just hanging upside down, and Rick Flag's like, anybody else? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anybody what, else? What this movie was, <laughs> it was good. so dude, so that part was so great. Yeah, and everybody's kind of mad, even though nobody gives a shit about Slipknot. Yeah, uh, okay, I was just gonna say, do you, do you think they wasted Slipknot as no. a character? No, okay, no. because I didn't even really care Fair one enough. way or the other if he was just curious. Mean, they even threw I, him in at the end, and I was like, oh, Slipknot's I cared, in it. But I think that for the movie, yeah, they needed the example. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So just the way the way Diablo was the sa- like the savior essentially at the end. Slipknot was the example. Okay, you know, so you have to have those kind of those kind of deals. And Captain Boomerang was this, the comic relief. The greatest thing about Captain Boomerang was his flashback. And when I say flashback, I mean Flash was fucking in it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In his costume. Wait, what? Wait, whoa, whoa! <laughs> He's robbing a bank, mm-hmm. and I don't even know if that scene might even be online right now. I have no idea. I don't know, but I'm gonna say that was my favorite scene. Dude, it was amazing. Was he and, in the full Flash? Yeah, awesome. yeah. And it looked awesome. like Injustice Flash. What did he say? Because I didn't catch it. He like caught the boomerang, and he said uh, something. Something. He he didn't say not so fast, but it was I, in that vein, probably. Okay. Uh, All right. Because pun. Um, and you got to be quicker than that, right? Something like that. <laughs> yeah. And boomerang <laughs> throws a boomerang at him, and his boomerangs are are vastly different than just boomerangs. He's really got boomerang. remote control ones, cool. he's got drone ones. He's which got, you saw that in the movie, which yeah. was awesome. He's got a drone one. That's amazing. It. Um, so he turns around, he throws an explosive one at Flash, and Flash catches it mm-hmm. and says, not so fast or whatever, whatever verbiage he used. And then, and like when he shows up, it's like that, blue, it's the blue lightning. It's not right. red lightning. Right. So in the comics, I guess the red lightning is, is slower, okay. and the blue lightning is like the fastest. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, but his costume looked straight out of Injustice, cool. uh, which was, was fantastic. And Urza Miller looks fantastic in that I costume. Love him. Fantastic. Yes. Um, so Flash is going to be a really fun movie when it comes out mm-hmm. because they've been kind of packing him in slowly into all these other things. So mm-hmm. when you get to unbox it, it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Um, I will say this about the movie: we're talking about a bunch of bad. Or and or evil characters, right? Yeah. And from their perspective, and every single character was different from the other as far as psyche goes. Like yeah. you, uh, Captain Boomerang. Yeah, they all have different motivation. Yeah. yeah, I have my Dungeons and Dragons alignment <laughs> up here. She plays D and D a lot. I do. I can't. I couldn't tell. <laughs> but like, but the, the entire movie, I was like, this is such a good representation of being not just bad, but Chaotic, but all, does, it, does it also lend itself evil. to being part of a party where everybody's intentions are not necessarily the same? Exactly yeah. that too. That too. Like, I think the type of person Captain Boomerang is—you probably know that person in oh, your life sure. where that person enjoys um, finding beauty in the chaos or finding the the comedy in the yeah. chaos or being a total shitbag. Yeah. Or that, you know. But to me, I like that. I like that character. She likes shit bags. I do. Yeah, no. Um, or, you know, El Diablo, who has done the unthinkable. Yeah. And wants to redeem himself. Whereas, if, if you knew somebody who killed their wife and kids, you'd be like, that person's fucked up. And the, the best was you know that I mean? he, he walked around with them because he had to, but he mm-hmm. wasn't doing anything. In yeah. all those fights, he's in the way back just hanging out. Right. He's, he's not sad. He's not involved at all. Yeah. They're trying to get him involved and he just won't. Mm-hmm. Um, and Deadshot. Deadshot's another... We didn't even talk about Deadshot. He's oh. basically the main fucking character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He and Harley are the co-leads mm-hmm. of the movie. Which is good because yeah. in the comics but let's get to. Have, but yeah. we could go through Deadshot first to get to oh, the Oh yeah, yes. The end. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> um... I had because, a feeling you were doing that yeah. because <laughs> you're going. We're going around the the obvious of okay. of Harley Quinn there. Okay. Um, we're going around the obvious that Amanda Waller is the most influential character. At, oh, I'm sorry. No. Well, she, she's kind of she's kind of the the chaotic uh, or the the neutral evil or the okay. chaotic. Like she's not the chaotic evil, but no. she's kind of the neutral evil. And her the ends are justifying the means. Right. And yeah. Lex Luthor and her between BVS and Suicide Squad have the same intention mm. but it's they go about it in different ways right. like Luther goes about it by trying to craft the silver bullet quote unquote out of kryptonite 
to ha- hold it as an inevitable gun to Superman's head to make sure he does what he's supposed to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But Amanda Waller is like, fuck that, we need people to, to be able to fight him. Because in this, Superman is dead, and they show the funeral again, kind of. Okay. Did we get the shot of them rolling up the, the flag again? Mm-hmm. And, um, and then Casting the, with no one in it. And the just, flyover. Yeah. And the flyover, they showed it again in this, and the flyover again has the one yeah. plane go up out of the formation. It's called a missing man formation, yeah. Okay, okay. But I don't, because there were, there were theories online that, that that plane has Hal Jordan in it. Ah, okay. And from Batman versus Superman, so now we've got that scene again, mm. which could be reiterating yeah. that point. Absolutely, absolutely. Or it could just be a standard military formation. Well, no, it is. No, it absolutely. No, I mean, but no, that 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 is called a missing man formation. They do that um, at funerals uh, yeah. for you know uh, fallen soldiers, and um, but that's very interesting that 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 makes sense. It's that, a prevail. It's a prevailing that they, theory that that Hal Jordan is flying that plane. Okay. Um, but, so we get that again, and Amanda Waller says, uh, "What if another Superman wanted to fly down?" rip the roof off the White House and hold the president at a hostage or random or kill him, uh, what would we do? So that is her justification See, for putting together this team of the worst of the worst, but right. really the best at being the worst. And that's interesting to me that, that that's the direction they took it, because for me, I don't know why, I, I, I figured that they would have had to have addressed Superman's death. Yeah. Since, obviously, you know, yeah. big part at the, at, at the end of Batman Superman, Batman v Superman. Um, I I thought that they were going to be more like, well, now that we don't have Superman, we need someone to deal with. It wasn't like necessarily another Superman, but someone to deal with the shit that Superman would deal with. Oh no, no, this is this is this is is absolutely protectionism. Yeah, protectionism, hundred percent protectionism. Where Lex Luthor was kind of being protective, but just because he wanted to be the guy to take down the next one or take down the current one, Mm -hmm. Um, because. They, I, I, they largely got Lex Luthor right, in my opinion, especially after I read Luthor by uh, Azzarello and and uh, and drawn by Libermino. Right, Luthor's great, um, yeah. but that's yeah, that's totally yeah. different. Um, so, but Deadshot, right? Yeah, because I I, I I was no, yeah, yeah. trolling a little bit with Amanda Waller, but yeah, no, get it back. Yeah. To, so, <laughs> so Deadshot. Yeah. So 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 Deadshot's basically the emotional core of the movie, mm-hmm. in my opinion. He uh, they have his daughter involved right from the beginning. Um, we see him in prison first. Uh, they basically explain to him what's going on. He's not necessarily interested. Then we get a flashback of him with his daughter. Uh, mommy says that you kill people. And he's like, she lying. Like, <laughs> he doesn't want to <laughs> tell his daughter that. He, and, she sa- and she basically says, like, it doesn't matter. I still love you. You're still my dad. Which is something that a lot of people of divorce... Oh yeah, you know yeah. can relate to for sure. Whether you're the dad in the situation or the child, yeah. Which that I, I liked El Diablo's story, yeah. Um, but I think I related the most. Not that my father's a, a, a mass murderer, a mass murderer <laughs> for money, but <laughs> you know the fact that he was trying so hard to show his daughter that you know he he's still good to he's her. He's a good he's a good guy to her, you yeah. know, no matter what he did. Um. So so that's happening, and then all of a sudden, Batman is in the alley, nice. and and he's like, uh, "We could make this quick, right? Mm-hmm. Or we could put on a show in front of your daughter. Yeah. You know, basically, you choose." Right. And Deadshot goes and pulls a gun on him, mm-hmm. and his daughter stands in front of the gun in front of Batman and says, "Don't do it. Just nice. go." And I've read a lot, or I've watched a lot of... And that's, like, right now, even thinking about it, like, just the shot of Will Smith holding a gun to a child's face with Batman standing behind that child is fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Well, I've watched a lot of, um, like, reviews mm-hmm. on that scene where they, a lot of people were pissed off because they said Batman would never do that in front of somebody's daughter, but I think Batman would because Deadshot is hard to... Yeah. To, he, yeah. I mean, he's a master he was, assassin. Yeah, yeah. He, you can't really catch him. He's a rogue. He yeah. can, you know, he can do whatever. And so that th- side mission in Arkham City was <laughs> tough. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> I think. So it, they. But wait. So they show. So they show um, uh, a scene of of Deadshot uh, working, um, and he's up on a rooftop, and it's kind of been in the trailers and stuff like that. He sets up a thing, and then he's up on a rooftop, and there's a bunch of government 
vehicles that pull up or whatever, and he, he's on the phone with somebody, and he's like, my account's still a little bit dry for me to do this. And the guy's like, listen, when you get when you get it done, you get the money. And he goes, that's not how this works. Right. And he's like, you got 11 seconds for me to pull this off before uh, before your target's gone. Right. He's like, so you need to pay up. Mm-hmm. And the guy pays him, and he goes, and for the hassle, double. <laughs> and he's like, great. and the guy's like, are you kidding me? And he's like, four seconds. Yeah. And the guy pays him. When it was close. It's only like three, two, and he fires the shot off of the thing that he sets up, and it ricochets and hits the the target immediately. Mm-hmm. And then you have the rest of the guys that are supposed to be protecting him, like, and he kills them all. Wow. Kills them all. But, like, mm-hmm. wipes them out. Wow. Um, and that was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, One thing I had heard about, uh, just real quick to get back to yeah, that, yeah. you said uh, Batman uh, nabbing Deadshot, was that Batman pulls out handcuffs. Yes. And yes, he had the bat yeah, cuffs. That's cool. Yes, that, that's and they, I believe they were shaped in in that way as well. I didn't catch it. I was just so happy. overwhelmed with that scene. Yeah, <laughs> I just um, kept looking back at, back at Matt and just like punching him <laughs> like it's Batman. Um, yeah, he pulled. I believe he had uh, literal bat cuffs. That's awesome. Uh, which is pretty sweet. So because we don't know necessarily when in the timeline that happens, mm-hmm. we don't know right. if Superman has already come and gone. Like we don't know where if that's from when Batman is. Being Batman and not necessarily right. retired Batman, um, but still, regardless, it was amazing. Um, so then the other Batman uh, clip that we get, right? Uh, Harley Quinn. Uh, <laughs> so I mm-hmm. did we we miss we talked about kind of Enchantress a little bit. Wait, is she in this? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I think we got most of the the squad. We didn't talk about Killer Croc, but he didn't really get anything other than he's a dude that looks like a crocodile. Big and medicine, yeah. and, but I mean, it just. That's a whole other conversation. Even, even though, well, really, I'll just really quickly then, mm-hmm. because even though they didn't necessarily give you backstory on him or explain really anything, how much explanation do you need, especially if he's born that way? Yeah. Because he kind of says that anyway. So, mm-hmm. like, do we need to see a little kid dressed like that? Like, I don't know. Um, the the makeup was phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, on yeah. him, the, the the character design. The only thing is, uh, was, was it Matt said it? He's like five two or something. Mm-hmm. He doesn't seem yeah. very big. Yeah. Otherwise, though, I would have been happy with a CG croc. Really? Because uh, the, uh, the, the CG has come so far. That's but the you thing. gotta, I, you gotta see that because that makeup is is or find so a bigger person then at least. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I, I could see the bigger person argument for sure. Uh, but the application of that makeup and how it looks on screen and, and in water and in fights and, and nothing, somehow nothing against that yes, I'm not saying anything against somehow that somehow that practical yeah. look be, well I think they might have gone that way too because the end of it is so bubblegum CGI mm. with Enchantress and the whole ending thing right mm. um uh, Croc has a big role to play in that too because he's the only one strong enough apparently to throw that bomb as far as it needed to go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so he throws the bomb into the Enchantress's uh uh Tesseract into the sky. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause, whoa, whoa, well, because it's it, can't use those terms, man. <laughs> the endings of those movies are so no, similar. I, 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 I read, yeah, <laughs> they're so similar yeah, yeah. in that in that they had to stop it. So Croc throws a bomb into it the way, uh, uh, who was it? Widow, Black Widow, yeah, punches the scepter, scepter yeah. uh, into. I the, don't want to think about that movie. But that <laughs> it's basically this the, a very similar ending. So Croc throws the bomb. And then, obviously, the only person that's good enough a shot to get the bomb that mm-hmm. deep into the dead thing, shot, yeah. dead shot. He pulls his guns, or his gun, and aims it, and he closes his eyes, and it, like, does slow-mo, and he's like, <gasps> and he looks, because he's getting the, the, his breath, like, slowed down. Yeah. And what does he see in front of him but his daughter's face at the end of the barrel? Ah, uh, wow. And she says something to him. She said the same thing, basically. The, basically the same thing that she said when he yeah. when he was, uh, you know, you don't have to do this, blah, 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 or whatever. And he, and he like, because Enchantress has already filled them with, with flashbacks. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, kind of the way Scarlet Witch did in Age of Ultron. Right. Um, mm. And <laughs> so she does the, the flashback thing. So then his daughter's face is kind of in his head already. And then he sees her and he like breathes again and he looks up. And there's like sweat and everything, and he pulls the fucking trigger anyway. Right. And it's, her, obviously her face is gone. Right. Yeah, Bullet yeah. hits the bomb. Bomb explodes. Right. And Chantress is and she's dead. Yeah. Right. I, I'm just gonna, like the 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 makeup for Killer Croc always looked good to me. It looked amazing. And you, oh, whether yeah, it was the trailer yeah. stills, I'm just saying, I, I, Killer Croc to me is one of those big characters. Oh, you know, for sure. Oh, they could have. They could have. Yeah. They, could have yeah. they could have done the the Colossus thing from Deadpool, where they have a guy wear a thing and yeah. 
But I, I really think they went for practical just because the rest of it, the, maybe they blew the CGI no, budget. The, the reason is because David Ayer is big on practical effects. Oh, and for sure. Fair. Yeah. Before we go into Harley, did you guys want to talk about Enchantress and maybe Rick Flag, or do you just want to move on? To I want well, to well, move on to Harley Quinn first. <laughs> well, because well, they, it's not going to take long to talk about the two of them because Rick Flag sure. is, is kind of just a uh, neutral good. Okay. Uh, yep. He's kind of just Actually, doing. He's kind of just doing what he needs to do. He's, he's lawful he's, good. True. Here is here is a DC comparison of okay. the D and D alignments. As you see, Superman is lawful good. Maybe 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 neutral good. You're, yeah, because yeah. right? yeah. Rick Flag's kind of just doing what he's got to do. I mean, yeah, because he's he's under the direction of Waller, uh, but he's the one that's in charge of the group, and he's got to keep them in line. Right. He's got some good lines. Him and Will Smith play this off each other really, really well. Good. Nice. This um, is really good. Come on. Yeah. Uh, him and him and Will Smith play off each other really well. Him and Joel Kinnaman, they were great. Right. Um, he's in love with June Moon mm-hmm. as June Moon. Right. And then he can't really control when Enchantress comes out of her. Mm-hmm. So that becomes an entire thing. Okay. Um, and he kind of is the one that loses her because uh, he was supposed to be the one that control. He, you're the only thing that could keep her her. Right. So mm-hmm. keep her her, and then Enchantress takes over and disappears from him. Right. So he kind of gets screwed over, and and Waller gets real mad about that. Um, and June Moon was cool. Enchantress, I I thought as a character looked good. Mm-hmm. She didn't have any shitty tattoos, so I was already in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Cara Delevingne, good choice for that. Yeah, uh, she's not that great of an actress. Okay, she's I still a model. Yeah. I, I mean, I wasn't. In, here's the thing with the entire cast, and I don't mean to sound like a fucking. Yeah. Asshole, yeah, yeah no, but no, that's no, no, I get well. It. I mean, look, you, you are who you are. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I liked her acting. I liked her acting. The, my my biggest thing about the entire cast is that they spent so long. Oh, um, I thought you were going to say so much money. I was like, yeah. No, no, <laughs> just like going months and months and months and months, you know, becoming that character physically, mentally. I mean, Margot Robbie actually researched yeah. Harley Quinn's research yeah, on the right Joker in re- like reference to real life. Yeah. So she would actually ask questions to Jared Leto when they were um, by themselves and see how he would react to Mm -hmm. it, and that's how they improvise. But with Kara, she would walk through her woods naked, howling at the moon. Now, I I am very big on wizards. uh, Is there a video of this? (laughs) (laughs) I'm very big on wizards, sorcerers, witches. It's playing in my head right now. (laughs) And I expected more from her. Yeah. Because if you were going to become like a carnal, like to the core witch, you're not going to be doing this. Yeah, she was kind of... You're not going to be swaying. It was a little hokey. And uh, I still kind of bought it. Within the context yeah. of everything, but it was just kind of like, oh, whatever. Samantha, it sounded like you had a problem with the Enchantress character, though. Did you? I don't know. I don't... See, my thing is that I don't know too much about DC. I don't know... When I see Enchantress, I see her in a witch hat. Absolutely. Which would yeah. have pissed me off, but that is the character. Yeah. And I can't get mad at that. When yeah. I saw... I, I mean, s- they did a good job tying it to the the ancient thing. Yes, and having that I like tie that. into Diablo, which was totally unexpected. Mm-hmm. Um, I love so that. They, so they kind of made it all make sense within the context of the film. But it, I, I, she was... she was Of all of the characters, I, I'm like least thrilled about her. But yeah. I don't know if she's going to be back anyway. The anywhere. possession was on point. Okay. The, the part... The, the transition... Where Perfect. they're where they're in they're in the 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 uh, the, the government room or whatever the secret bunker mm-hmm. or whatever and all of the military guys are standing around the thing right. mm-hmm. and Waller's explaining the entire Suicide Squad thing in general. Mm-hmm. Um, she's like, "We have uh, our ace in the hole" or whatever. And Doctor June Moon, will you come up here? And it's just she's an archaeologist or right. whatever. She goes, mm-hmm. "Show them," and she puts her hand on the table and she goes, "Enchantress." Mm-hmm. And there is her hand is on the table. Oh, I heard about this. And yeah. there is a black hand yeah. that grabs her hand and gra- and and grasps it and twists it over. And when the right. camera comes back out from her hand, it's enchantress. Right. I love the coolest that. fucking I, yeah, transition. Awesome. Visually yeah. coolest transition. And when she was in the bathtub and she looks up yes. at the flag oh and she says, "Please help me." Yeah, because she's in a she's in Perfect. a clawfoot bathtub and there's like cattails or like those leaves that are on okay. like the swamp and stuff like that and the water's black it rushes yeah yeah and she's just sitting in there like here up like chest height up mm-hmm. and she's just like please help me yeah 
Because you're like, fuck, man. Yeah. Terrifying. That, that was heavy. Yeah. That, that But then you so see good. her and you're kind of like, eh, it's When she's in scene. her um, yeah. ancient garb yeah. after her brother gives her power yeah. and she's like dancing. She was kind of, it kind of looked like uh, Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sold on it anymore. I liked her in her. In Ghostbusters her... 2016. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you could have just seen Melissa McCarthy dive through the wall and just take her out. Uh, right. <laughs> have Kate McKinnon lick the, the, the pistols. <laughs> no, we're going like, up on like a tangent. badass. We're going Sorry. up on anyway. a tangent. Um, yeah. Before we get to the, the Harley discussion, I do want to ask a quick question. Um, so, because you said like you know it's it's a character film. Yeah. So the plot wasn't that great then. No, no, okay. but but in a character film, by definition, it's not plot. Driven, yeah, yeah, no. So, that, so there's a there's, so there's like two there's about two thirds of this movie that are that's character based, mm-hmm. and you're getting character development, and we're putting people in rooms to talk to other people to right. develop stuff. I was and more then, invested with the oh yeah, character and then the and then the back third is the plot where they mm-hmm. have to actually get together and stop stuff, right? And then, so, see that, and that's where I can see where people had a had an issue with like, the, the, the quality of the film then is that the, the story yeah because it gets because it then. gets and when you hear the word muddled about the movie right. it's because it shifts those gears yeah um but that's largely in part to not having an origin to right. mm-hmm. take the time to develop and then move on to the actiony stuff and that that because the, that that'd be that'd be it's it's almost like the Avengers if you had to spend the first <laughs> third of the movie summing up those four movies right Right, or, four or maybe or five. even two thirds of the movie. But you, but you know what I mean. So that's mm-hmm. like, so that's kind of why it turned out the way it, it did. And I don't necessarily fault it for that because right. the character work is is good character work. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's a lot to have to deal with all in one shot because then they all have to fight together. And you're read like, that there was a lot of exposition. Yeah, yeah, yeah but so. it, again, necessary. Yeah, you mm-hmm. know, because if they didn't give you the exposition, the complaints online would be, "There's no exposition. I don't know what the hell's going right, on in this right. movie." Mm-hmm. So. That'll tie into something I want to talk about later, but let's let's get into. Are we are we at an hour already? No, I don't think we are. I think we're getting we're 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 close. We're like about fifty minutes in. So Shit. Let's let's talk about Harley. Okay. Mm. Um. Mm. Go ahead. Yeah. The floor <laughs> Just, is yours. Why don't you start it off? <laughs> All right. Well, um, I thought. Okay, so I thought that Harley Quinn was, uh, the realest way that you could make her. Yeah. Um. In real on life. screen, real life wise. Mm-hmm. Um, and it and it and it kind of goes into something that I, I, I listened to Kevin Smith's review of it. Yeah, same here. And and he said that when you see her, like, because they give you the Alex Ross Batman Harley Quinn cover. Yes, yeah. second favorite scene. Uh, uh, well, just just in terms of visual, it was amazing. Oh, it was um, beautiful. I remember that was like one of the first things. That's one said. of the first things you said coming out of the movie. But um, when they do that, we get her in the leotard with the hat. And mm-hmm. the two and yeah. um, the Harlequin outfit, mm-hmm. and um, kind of echoing what he said, would have been a little hokey if she wore that the entire time. Mm. Um, well, but not, but not necessarily in a bad way. Just people don't wear full leotards and funny hats like that. So it would have been the other the, re- the, outfits, though, the, nece- the necessary realism mm-hmm. juxtaposition between the between them would have been very weird. I feel like. As with any comic book movie, there's a way you could do that mm-hmm. that it would be believable. I have friends who oh, are she, yeah, amazing no, yeah, could, cosplayers yeah, yeah. who have cosplayed Harley, and they look amazing. Now, I know there's a difference between seeing it in on the comic and then in real life and then on the screen. I get it. Yeah. But I just I feel like there could have been a way to do that. And I understand what Kevin's supposed to say. Because like, as, as she looked in that quick, it was, what was it, three seconds, if oh. that... But it was like such a. I cried. I wanted to, to just chew bubble gum over that scene yeah. for a while. <laughs> I wanted to um, just keep playing yeah. it over and over again. Um, but she she kind of like she it, it looked great because that was it. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they even gave it to you to begin with yeah. is mm-hmm. what I was concerned with, and they gave it to you because my concern was, what are we just going to see her pick it up and toss it aside? Because that was kind of insulting to me. Right. Yeah. But she wore it. And, yeah. and then oh, that's cool. she wears it, and then she finds it in her suitcase, and she holds it to herself. So it's almost as if you're watching her remember that moment in time, mm-hmm. yeah. which was cool. Yeah, because they, because you got that the Alex Ross thing before the the holding it to herself mm-hmm. and tossing it aside. It's almost like she went, "Oh, that was a great night," 
and then and talks, everyone else was like, "That was a that great was a great forever. Yeah. yeah, that was a great twenty five years." Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, but the stuff that she wore in this now, like, I had issues with the costuming. I still don't like the tattoos, mm. um, but that's kind of the way that they denote that her and Joker are linked. I guess. I can see. I never thought of it that you way. You know, like because that, like because you see the the two of them, and you're like, oh, they both have the tattoo. You know, whatever. And that's immediately what I got when they first, when I first saw the designs. Was that oh, they're they're making them yeah linked like that, like that, like that. physically yeah. because yeah. It, or yeah, physically because you know, she probably was the one who gave him his tats. He's probably one. Who yeah, because they her said tats. that they said that uh, definitively. Hers are the uh, whether what is it called point and stick or whatever mm-hmm. where you like do it yourself. She does it herself. Or kinda, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but she has a Harlequin thing here like it's almost like a quarter sleeve on her arm that has mm-hmm. like the, the pattern so those I mean the tattoos and honestly they don't even come through in the movie okay yeah as you're watching it I don't even see it anymore because Margot Robbie just fucking knocked it out of she had a yeah. baseball bat and she knocked it out of the park mm-hmm. that's been pretty much the consensus I've heard is that it's her movie that she really owns it. Yeah, that she, she is, dude. She she is Harley. She like, does. She, I figured out why they chose this costume, by the way. And uh, you're not just going to go with the short short thing, are you? What? That just, they pick it because she's wearing short shorts, and everybody goes, "Ooh." Oh no! Okay. Um, <laughs> actually, imagine. So okay, the movie just came out, and um, Matt and I were at some mall. And we went into a hot topic because we were like, guess guess what's going to be all over the place, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, we were joking they, about it. They had it up on a mannequin? Well, what happened oh, was okay. we walked in, and on the front table was her entire outfit. Mm-hmm. And I said, I want this jacket. <laughs> the outfit is marketable. It's genius, yeah. actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's easy for cosplayers. I've seen several people wear the jacket already. Yeah. It's a genius. I mean, not that I would uh, ever condone wearing it in yeah. public. Yeah. Because it's, an easy it's hokey outfit. as it's hokey yeah, as fuck. Like, I agree. But if you're cosplaying, absolutely go you for it. You know what I mean? But like <laughs> now you have you have another Harley Quinn outfit, and I I was pissed off at the outfit before, but then when I went back and I looked up all of her outfits, I was like, that's actually not the fucking worst. Like the one in the video game where she has like the oh, nurse right. hat. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. What yeah. the fuck yeah, was yeah, that? Yeah. yeah, well, it's video game storytelling is vastly different than any other. Oh yeah, but because <laughs> you have to get like fifty hours out of it. You know, my <laughs> my my main concern was that she was going to come out like that. No, no. Well, you know yeah. What I so mean? so so the the costuming for me was an issue initially, mm-hmm. but quickly became not an issue because I believed her within the scope of everything else that was happening. Um, she crushed it. There's a scene because everybody kind of gets a moment and Harley Quinn is largely just in the group scenes. Um, mm-hmm. And then there's a scene where everybody's like, where did she go? And you see her going up the elevator and she kind of waves at them like, hey. Because like everybody's going upstairs and she just takes off because she doesn't listen to anyone. Um, By the way, why didn't she get her head blown off then? Because he he didn't he he she wasn't trying to escape, uh, she was just going to the next level of the the boss fight essentially. Uh, got it. <laughs> um, but she takes off by herself, and then naturally she's there by herself, and it seems like there's going to be a damsel in distress moment where she gets attacked by two of the enchantress's uh, villain things. Guys. Yeah. The ocular black so, something thing. Describe them as shit dogs or something like yeah, that. Could be. <laughs> she was she was possessing people, and then they were growing like these weird bulbous black. They kind of looked like black corns on a cob, Hot. but like grosser. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't sure about it. Yeah, I don't know. It didn't matter yeah. largely, and they kind of said that too. <laughs> they just were like, "Oh, we'll just kill them all," because they were real people, and I don't know if they were actually dead now. There was and that, no... that was why they were <laughs> able to kill them. Yeah. For for the movie, yeah, and avoid a R rating, yeah, exactly, because they were like nothing zombies. Um, so two of them show up in her elevator, and she dispatches them all by herself. Okay, crushes them, kills them with the baseball bat. She's flipping over the top. Baseball bat. She shoots the one in the fucking head, and mm-hmm. she's cr- like totally awesome sequence. And then the elevator doors open up, and everybody, because they're all men other than her in the group. And Katana. Well, in Katana, everybody's at the door of the elevator, like, yeah. with their like with their go. weapon yeah. to go, and mm-hmm. then the door's open, and she's just, like, twirling her bubblegum, and she's like, what? I and got this walk- shit taken care of. She goes, yeah. what? And walks mm-hmm. past them, and they're yeah. all just like... Shit's on lockdown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Which was just such a 
Because that's the character. Like, yeah. you worry about her, and then she comes out of it. Right. And she's just like, what the fuck is the big deal? Mm. Um, so she Which did. speaks volumes. Yes. So we'll get yes. into that. Yeah, she totally, they totally did, <laughs> they totally did such a good job. Well, let's get into that now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. if you want to, I'm down. <laughs> um, because. Because we've, we've largely <laughs> left out, uh, from, for what I thought was the black eye on the film. Uh, uh, Jared Leto's Joker. You mean the damaged eye? <sighs> <laughs> Should we? Ha, ha, ha. You know what? We'll talk about Harley Quinn and then we'll lead into Joker because I kind of think it's it'll go hand in yeah, hand. Yeah, well, so we her can just talk about them at the same time. Yeah, yeah. well, because her because her because her flashbacks, uh, there's not one without him. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't remember. Uh, the was the first one where Batman shows up again. Uh. Date I night. honestly can't. Date night. So it's so we're at the Joker's club because he owns a club or something. He it looks like he owns that club. He's wearing a mm. Elvis style gold smoking jacket or something, uh, but no shirt underneath it, so you could always see his tattoos. Um, and and they're in like a VIP room, and Harley's dancing in a cage because it's that kind of thing, I guess. And it's like clearly the gross underbelly of the city. <laughs> we don't mm -hmm. necessarily know that it's Gotham. We kind of assume that it's Gotham. Um, and and then Common, who plays uh, scary black guy Thug One, with the head tattoos and the septum piercing to end all septum piercings, comes in uh, and he says, "Man, you're you're real lucky, Jay, or whatever he calls him. You know, you got that. You know that girl." And he's like. And Joker's like that girl, or however he did yeah. that because he was such a the itch weird. In my crotch, yeah. Or some like, fuck. he the ugh. it was watching him like afterward watching him. It was kind of like he was he was he looked closer to uh, obviously minus the tattoos looked closer to Nicholson's Joker with Ledger Joker sensibility. Yeah, yeah. but oh, that's perfect. But Mannerisms, manner because yeah. he clearly seemed like he was doing that. The way he was speaking, with the softness and then the breathing and then the and then the gruffness randomly within his sentences, mm -hmm. and, <laughs> like it was kind of. And, and yet, Leto wonders why so many of his scenes were cut. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I don't I'm, know. I'm, I'm very story. glad that that yeah. happened. I'll watch all of them begrudgingly on Blu-ray when it's released, but I didn't want them in the movie, and I'm glad that there weren't that many. Um, so he does that he does his whole thing and he like whistles and Harley comes up and she comes through the window and she sits on Common's lap and in that moment like freeze framed in my head I was like he's gonna fucking pimp her out and that bothered me f for for a really long time even like to like to this moment even though knowing he doesn't actually pimp her out mm -hmm. it pissed me off yeah, that it was, and even, that's fair. That it was even a question because I was like, not only is he like some sort of Instagram, yeah, uh, <laughs> criminal, he's also a pimp. <laughs> like, why don't we just take everything and turn it upside down? Like, up is down, <clears throat> black is white. Joker is a pimp uh, because that's never been a thing. I, he's largely no, not involved not. in sex crime. Weirdly, he likes to murder, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was my issue with yeah. the fucking thing. But. Uh, but I, but I still feel like if I, if if you're Bruce Wayne and this Joker is running amok in Gotham City, you just call him and like, listen, ten million dollars in a briefcase on top of Gotham Tower, we'll call it even. And this Joker in my head would be like, sweet, like <laughs> score, yeah, because like. <laughs> He he seems way more concerned with his image and his wow. look than oh, that's a shame. the criminal aspect of his nature. Mm. Well, uh, I think uh, that in that scene, because you were pissed off about it, because he <laughs> he tells Harley to come over. Yeah, she gets on top of. Uh, she sits on his lap, and he's kind of like, "Jay, I don't want to. I don't want to do this, this to you." She's like, "What? You don't want me? You don't want me?" And the joke. And then she takes like, a, a huge back seat in that scene because she just sits down, literally, and and then it's kind of a Joker well, scene, and I'm just kind of like. I don't First think... of all, they called it date night, right? Right. So it's the two of them at the club. They're not even near each other. Uh, so I, I've, I've never been on a date like that, although I've been with somebody for 11 years, So uh, where we go out and don't hang out with one another. Um, but then, So then they get into the car, 
and he's in his fucking pink Lamborghini thing, right. and then Batman's like thump right onto the roof, mm-hmm. and he and they're like, "Don't ruin, not on date night." Doesn't she scream that? Yeah, right. She and shoots up and and yeah. she's firing her yeah. gun through the thing, and Joker's like driving. He's like, "Ooh, ooh whatever," because <laughs> his uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, he's, he's so so they're driving. Jewish. So he's driving, and and Batman's kind of doing whatever, and. They're driving. They're headed for a pier, okay. right? And Batman grappling guns off of the car. The car shoof, off in the water into the water. Batman m- m- muzzles up. Right. Swan Re- dives into wrong. the water. Yeah. yeah. Swan dives into the water. Goes down. the The driver door is open, and Joker is gone. <laughs> and Harley is through the windshield. And she's before oh, they Jesus. before they go through that um little barricade she says put in i can't swim yeah yeah and they, she says that like three times i can't swim i can't swim put in i bam right into the water batman re-reather swan dive into mm-hmm. the water joker doors open so he's either dove out before the car hit the water on land or he, land, or he got out and took off which right. scientifically doesn't make sense no yeah he cut bait on her basically he left mm-hmm. her for dead um which kind of goes against paul's point of the right. love thing but Regardless, Batman is about to save her, but she's playing possum. She like sits up and tries to do something, and he wallops her right in her fucking face, and then throws her over his shoulder, swims out of the water, is carrying her to the Batmobile, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how she gets locked up, yeah. leading into this right. movie. Um, which that whole scene was just comic book nerdgasm. Yeah, Be, just the, the way it looked, it was phenomenal. Other than the specific look of him, right, right, the feel of the whole thing, which was it was that's a lot of my issue with him. The is, car being purple and yeah, a, lo- a lot of my cover, issue cover with it is, is it the specific look of it, but the overall feel yeah. was still good, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other flashback was the the in chemical vet scene, well, the chemical yeah. wedding. Yeah, yeah. So it's the new fifty two. My, um, my Chemical Romance. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, actually, literally, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, she, she they're up on the, the very tall thing. Triggered, triggered yeah, already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, he, and he says, um, will you, will you would die you, for me? Would you die for me? But in his grand theatrical, yeah. would you die for me? Yeah. Thing, because he can't right. talk because the front's in his mouth. <laughs> um, he got grills. Yes. Uh, and everybody keeps saying Batman knocked his teeth out. There's teeth there still. Oh, he's like really, yeah, interesting. So he's uh, wearing grills, uh, in my opinion. Um, Got to keep that pimp cred, man. Yes, uh, even mm-hmm. though he's not actually, but could be potentially possible. Um, he says, "Would you die for me?" And she says, "Yes, of course," or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he goes, "Oh, you're so good." No, right? no, 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 not is. yet, not yet. Yeah. He, and then he says, "No," That's and he turns too easy. around. That's too easy. Yeah. And then he looks at her. He goes. Would you live for me? Um, and just real quick, because we can't have visuals on here. I just rolled my eyes so hard <laughs> they almost popped out of my head. Continue. Uh, so he says, "Would you live for me?" And there's, then does she say, "Yes, of course." She says some of that effect. Yes, he, sir. And he goes, like "Please, that. please, please say it, or please beg, or something like that." And she says, "Yes." And he goes, "Oh, you're so good." And does he, does like, he, he, he like kind of face. gives her like a, a, a stern love tap on yeah. the face and says, "You're so good." Yeah. And then she stands Which, by at the, the way, edge. there's different interpretations yes. of that scene. <laughs> yeah. She stands at the <laughs> edge, puts her arms out, and falls backwards like a trust fall into right. the ace. And it is ace chemical. Right. Mm-hmm. It says it on the side of the thing. Falls backward into it. And he looks like he's going to leave. He just He's about to walk away. And then he like... He like shrugs real hard. Almost like fine. Almost like fine, but... Or like... The way it, I've heard it be interpreted is kind of an awakening himself, mm. and he turns around and sort of sprints and dives off himself. Yeah, yeah, from that's from the trailer. And yeah. and mm. dives in and then picks her up and then it looks like he was trying to save her in the trailer, but it, he just starts making out with her, like hardcore ah, making out with okay. her in the chemical. Um, well, as I mean, as the colors are pissing off of the two of them right. now because they're in the so d- it is like acid or whatever right. Right. Mm-hmm. and they're kissing each other within the acid right. I'd like to interject now yeah no go for it <laughs> let's do um, so let's go back to the club scene so yeah. now so 
what's interesting about you and I mm-hmm. is that you've been in a relationship that's normal for <laughs> 11 years. They were normal. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I've... The thing of... Okay, <laughs> let, let me get this out of the, uh, the Joker out of the way. This Joker I'm not afraid of. This Joker I've fucking dated before, minus the murder, you know. I've dated this guy. He was too clean cut for me. He did not scare me. He did not strike me no. as somebody who was, there was chemically no, altered. No, there was no um, there was no amount of terror that I had yeah, at all. He was him. like the purple man, which I'll get into. Yeah. He was a sociopath. He's he's not a psychopath in this. Yeah. And that's and there's what the a, Joker there's is. a marked difference between the two. Vast. Yeah. <laughs> this this Joker was eccentric. Yes, but was not, you know, the full on. Yeah, he perfect. Yeah. He didn't kill. He it, plus murder. It didn't yeah. look like he just, would just wantonly murder someone. It would always be for gain. Somehow. Yes. See, on the spectrum of the alignment, <laughs> the Joker is chaotic evil, Absolutely. and that is the lowest you can right. go. Whereas in this movie, he was kind of more like chaotic neutral, which is kind yeah. of like. I'm going to kill somebody if it, if it benefits yeah, me, like, they, like what you the, said. If my ends justify my means. Exactly. Um, Whereas in other interpretations of the Joker, because yeah. I don't want to just say Ledger's Joker because people are going to kill that comparison to death, he would just kill for the sake of killing because it would it riled everybody up. Right. It got well, everybody moving. I'll say this about... The differences between you and I, yeah. where um, you're going to perceive those scenes as kind of confusing, mm-hmm. whereas I enjoyed those scenes because I, I, in some lights, have been a part of right, that. Right, you've kind of, you've almost, not, I've been hard, not like, literally, no. but you've lived that situation. Yeah, the, that feeling where... The the so date night not not being together she's dancing on other women and men and he's kind of just yeah, like staring kinda, at her. She was kind of all up on some other women. Yeah, yeah, that's that is like a um uh, it's so defining of like a chaotic open relationship. Um, and I think that is very important to bring to the table mm-hmm. if you're going to talk about real life Harley. Yeah, because, because this is largely real life Harley. Even yeah, though the things yeah. that they do are fantastic. So when he when he says to um, Common, Common, um, what, what what is it? You you want her or something like that? She comes over and she's also messing with Common's head. What you don't want me? You yeah, don't yeah, want yeah, me? yeah. Um, and and the Joker's like egging that on, and he's getting mad. Is because what you said in the beginning actually. You should understand the scene where it's more of a possession thing. Right. It's like a catharsis, like, for men like that, it's like, I want I want to see her in that situation. Because you want to know what she would do. Yeah. Yeah. You want to see her be with another man and still love you. God, that's such an ugly fucking it's, thing. Jesus yes, Christ. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's, it's not, I mean... <laughs> I don't want to talk about anybody's, like, preferences sexually. Yeah. I respect it. Yeah. If it's mutual. Right. Um, and right. in this case, it was. Okay. Um, you could, I mean, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> from, from what I was seeing, it was. And now Harley Quinn Because is, she played with it a little bit, too. But yeah. But just, I, the, that whole idea. Yeah. I, go ahead. But I, yeah. Uh, I know it's <laughs> kind of off the comic books, yeah. but when you think about... Joker. No, I'm just being, talking real life, like people. Like, oh I can't yeah, well, that it, idea. it believe me, no, it I'm happens. Sure. <laughs> um, the Harley Quinn is a master manipulator. Mm-hmm. Not she's not the she's not being manipulated all the time. No. She's also manipulating. And this and this iteration of her, she they played she, up on that. Yeah, she is she is the one doing the. I was stuff. proud. Yeah. I was very proud of David Ayers yeah. making that decision. Um, but also, I kind of wish. Um, there was, there was one sequence in the movie where we could have just been rid of Leto's Joker forever. Yeah, and uh, you have a good scene. Uh, please yeah, please I just, tell, talk about so, it. So, I, I thought of a way to write him out of the movie almost entirely, but still give s- strong dramatic effect to his existence in mm-hmm, the film, mm-hmm. which would have been never really show him, because it's Harley's flashbacks. Ah, right. 
So why are we could even been, why could, are we even giving him solo FaceTime at all? Could have been a figment of her imagination. Or could have been, a remnant, like, a remnant of yeah. him. Like or she can't remember what he looks like because yeah. it's been so long or yeah. whatever. Mm. Um we don't see him through you know, it's always just kind of either blurry or just off screen, like right. in the scene with the car. Right. Just be on her, kind of see his hands driving or from behind, but never actually see him. Yeah. And then and then That'd be kind of cool. Have all of the things happen the same, right? Except for the part where he comes back in the movie uh, to save her. At the end of the movie. Towards the end of the movie, he comes back to try to save her from the Suicide right. Squad. Uh, and that's the scene where we get him with the Tommy gun right. in the in the, the in helicopter. the helicopter. Because yeah. um, he's trying to kill all of them to save her. Because right. he doesn't really know... He doesn't really know the situation no. she's in. He just knows that she's with a bunch of people. Oh, oh I thought you were talking about the end of the movie. Well, right. So... so so instead of having that at all, oh, wipe, oh, wipe okay. that out completely. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Don't have Harley go with him because she grabs onto the thing. She's like, bye. Right. And then his helicopter gets shot down. Right. They we think he's dead. They could have killed him. Yes. Like for real. Yeah. They could have killed him and been done with it. And I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. Like I know that it wasn't, but just a part of me was like, I really hope they killed or him. Or even in the because, car scene. Because they could have just, because then it could have just been about her. Right. Mm-hmm. Because that's what this movie was going for. Yeah. But we kept making it about him too. Like yeah. it was like Harley and the Joker right. mm-hmm. all the time. Um, so that's part of DC's so, problem. So they could have. So they could have gotten rid of him. But regardless, I would get rid of that scene entirely. Yeah. Do something else up there. Whatever. Firefight. Have more minions. Whatever the fuck. Doesn't matter. Um, and then at the end of the movie. We he's been dead this whole time, right? Yeah, yeah. Harley is locked back up, but her sentence has been reduced mm-hmm. because she participated, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, which was largely the idea behind all of it. If you right. survive, we reduce your sentences yeah. by however much. Like I think Captain Boomerangs, they took ten years off of his three life sentences. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> he was real pissed about that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so Harley's locked back up, but at, at, for a, a, a joke line, she asks for um, an espresso machine, and she gets the espresso machine, and she's got like a romance book, and her hair's all done, and she's sitting there, and she's got like slippers on, and she's reading a romance novel. And then, and then the room explodes, yeah. and these guys come in in full tactical SWAT gear. They cut open her cell. They cut open because she's in her. She's in a locked down room in a cell with yeah. barbed wire on the top. Right. In a cell. Yeah. Saw that in the first trailer, yeah. Three levels yeah. of trying to keep her in. And then they noted at the beginning that the last time they opened the door, she put five guys in a hospital. And then, and then once they opened the door again for her, she puts three, at least, more guys in a mm-hmm. hospital. Because she presumably breaks the one dude's neck, right. beats the shit out of the other guy. All with her hands, too. No weapons. She's right. a gymnast. She's a gymnast. Yeah. Phenomenal. Um, they cut open her cell, they cut open the other cell, they get into it, rips off the mask, and it's Joker saving her. And she yeah. goes, put in, or whatever, mm-hmm. right? And they hug. I would and have saved see. his reveal to that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the whole film build towards her just missing him, and show those flashbacks, and she's like, I can't remember, whatever. Get to that, that's the first time. It would have been such an emotional upheaval yeah. to yeah, have that. For everybody. Yeah. Unfortunately, DC needed him to be part of the marketing to sell uh, the movie. Yeah, yeah. and... and I don't know how because just the whole conflict on well, Harley Quinn. Well, yeah. the problem the problem is is that beyond Harley in that movie without the Joker, there's no. I mean, you have Will Smith, but you don't have character yeah, ticket factor. Yeah. yeah, and I should say not. They, they didn't need it. They thought they needed. Right, it. right, right. That's, right. That's what they thought they needed. Uh, um, now, yeah. Samantha, you said you 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 saw you saw a comparison between Harley and and Jessica Jones. Oh God. Let me let me get my Google Docs up just so I know what. Because we touched on this in the in the first podcast where I said if you want the justice for that yeah. character, watch Jessica Jones. Right. So Samantha went okay. Yeah. So just to refresh memory, I said the that Harley should either kill or um, break away from the Joker in this movie, and it would do that character justice. Where you both of you said that's not in the cards for her because just like without. The Joker, there would be no Batman. Mm-hmm. Without the Joker, there'd be no Harley Quinn, and vice versa. Uh, and you said if you would like to see justice for a character in that, like, see Jessica Jones. And I took your advice. <laughs> and you watched it. Now, and you loved which is, it, which is a good move. <laughs> I. <laughs> she she's still not over it. <laughs> I still don't have the words for it. Um, the, Amazing. The only thing, and you're right. Uh, uh, the character in my mind 
getting justice in that light is Jessica Jones. Yeah. It is not Harley Quinn now because it's the literal get back here and she walks away. Yeah, right. yeah, but the, the <laughs> and thing then about, she's free of his power. <laughs> the thing about it is Jessica Jones is legitimately mind controlled. Now that's yeah. symbolic, but it's also very literal right, because mm-hmm. it's what's happening to her. Harley Quinn is not... She does not have Stockholm Syndrome. She is not held against her will. No, no. She loves the fucking mm-hmm. Joker. She is psychotic. She is also a murderer. Um, and she is... She is so psychotic that she... She was a psychiatrist who fell in love with one of her worst fucking patients. That speaks volumes mm-hmm. to that type of person she is. Mm-hmm. She's an intelligent... Yeah, she's an intelligent, but she's also... You know, you are the company you keep. Exactly. (laughs) Now, Jessica Jones... So she's largely a piece of shit, too. (laughs) Jessica Jones is, like, the B-class Supergirl. Mm -hmm. She's not that super. I I would say maybe C-class. Yeah. She's she's got superpowers, She can even fly. Yeah. She jumps. She glides. She glides. (laughs) Um, But that's what... That's what... So let's just... Oh, there's definitely stark differences. Oh, no, but this is what I want to get to. I want to get to it, um, because this is what I want to say. I want to say it. Um, But the Purple Man, let's just say he represents the sociopath, whereas the Joker represents the psychopath, right? Mm -hmm. Um, What sociopaths do is they isolate people like that who aren't, you know, the... the, um, the Avengers didn't even know that she was gone when she was mind controlled by the Purple Man until later. And then all of a sudden she has a kid and they care about her again. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the type of people that sociopaths prey on. Mm-hmm. That's why she was so easy to corral in. Um, so, although I would like to see her have a little bit of struggle with with him in the sense of like... Oh my god, is she gonna fall in love with him again? Yeah, it's not her character. She was never in love with him. No. So that w- that yeah, keep that in mind <laughs> as I continue. Um, and like I said, but he made her believe that she was. Yes, Oof. right. Which is interesting. Yeah. Um, and she largely believed it until she got free of him, and she right. was like, "I never loved, I never loved yeah. him." Like, mm-hmm. no. <laughs> but it took her what four episodes to come to that conclusion. But it right. was was so well done like every episode of that you just believed every Mm -hmm. fucking thing that happened um now with Harley Quinn um even in the comics she says that she tends to find um the dangerous types to be glamorous Mm -hmm. um she isn't a good character like I mean she's a good character as far as like no she's not not a good good guy Yeah. Yeah. yeah She's not a good guy. Quote so unquote. when right, so when people say don't glorify the relationship, I would say um, don't glorify Harley fucking Quinn. No, yeah. because uh, look, I'm all for um, strong female types, and I love that she's strong. I love that she uses her brain mm-hmm. and her you know flirting antics yeah. to get her way. But she's not. She she's a murderer. Both. She uses both. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say that. Um, I don't even know where I'm getting to with this, but, <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> um, yeah, no, I think that if, if I was to say, I want to see Jessica Jones fall in love with a purple man and have her struggle, that would be glorifying the relationship. Mm-hmm. That would be glorifying and, and kind of subjecting her to abuse. Did they, I, I think they, I think she even threw the, the R word at him, uh, oh. Jessica Jones. Yeah, absolutely. That, oh, yeah, that, yeah, 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 that he yeah. raped her. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 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 Because cuz she didn't she doesn't she, have those feelings. Exactly. He made her he made her like he made her because of his powers, mm-hmm. but yeah. uh in a real life situation he made her yeah. uh mm-hmm. have sex with him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then he goes you didn't do anything you didn't want to do and yeah. you know, but obviously the, she the, did. The whole definition of his powers is that she absolutely did yeah. everything yeah. that she did not want to do. Yeah. So, yeah. so I so the one of the things in Jessica Jones that I like when I thought about it and things connected in my head like really fast mm-hmm. um, when I said that when I initially said if the Joker said to Harley get back here I didn't even consider Jessica Jones because I had just I watched it a, a while ago mm-hmm. and then I went oh my god that actually happened and then I went 
oh my god, that's a character for Samantha yeah. to watch. Yeah. And then I went, holy shit. And then I, the one thing I thought of specifically in Jessica Jones was the episode wherein he buys her childhood home and puts oh, yeah. her in it. Yeah. And then she has to, she has to yeah. lull him into a sense of security with her. So she can escape. So then she can escape. And I was like, that was such a powerful, I think that's just one episode. That is. Yeah. Um, such a powerful it's an, sequence. It's, it's an end of an episode where she's there, and then the entire episode while After, she's there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was the one specifically that I wanted you to see. Yeah. Because that was mm-hmm. such a powerful thing, where she had to pretend. Like, it's such a hard dynamic, because he his power is to control people, and mm-hmm. when he says stuff, people do it. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't ever truly know if he's controlling them or if they're just listening to him. I told him I had to go screw himself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then he he buys her house. He thinks he's being flattering. He mm. thinks it's like a, a gesture of good faith, um, but it's also a huge, obviously, manipulation tactic oh, yeah. against her. And she immediately sees it for what it is. But she's also terrified that he's actually going to gain control over her. Yeah. So what's that? <laughs> that I would say, in turn, is just as ugly as as what you mentioned before with Joker and the Harley. Oh yeah. On date night. Now the thing is, for me, mm-hmm. watching that, the Joker Harley thing still bothers me more, and it was a very, very small. But I think it's because I saw the definite end of that situation in yeah. Jessica Jones, yeah. so I I'm not as bothered by it yeah. because she was able to escape and she got you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Whereas with Harley, you're kind of like, does this happen all the time? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I don't. Has it happened and Joker watched the guy have sex with her and then kill the guy? Like, that, there are that brings people up, out there like that. That just brings up a very uncomfortable thing for me personally. Right. Understood. Because but, you, you've never been in that situation. And I will never be. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> I, I've, without the murder. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I've, that's good. <laughs> yeah. I've been in those types of it's a situations. Really, that's a really brave way to, um, Declassify a situation without the murder. Without the murder. Uh. <laughs> um, but in both situations, where a guy like that, a sociopath, will kind of dig his way into your psyche so far that, and I thought it was interesting that he went all the way back to her childhood. And was yeah. like, I'm going to buy her home and yeah. I'm going to make her live in it with me. So, but does he? So does he know? I like he knew she had those powers, right, Jessica? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Because he saw her. He saw her. Right, right, the dude. Be, yeah, 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 yeah. Be a hero. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So he knew she had those powers, but he she, he might have gotten her to say when they uh, metamorphosized for her. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why he used that moment, because he mm-hmm. knew her childhood home would be such a trigger. Yeah, uh, because it was before all of All of her, the shit. Yeah. Yeah. So he knew that that was yeah. the ultimate trigger for mm-hmm. her, was her childhood home. And then didn't he say, like was her brother's name or something like that yeah. and she went off the fucking wall yeah. right right um because it's been a mm-hmm. while since i've seen it but i'm remembering it no, yeah. as i think of it yep. i'm like remembering the things from it um mm-hmm. but yeah i like that scene with like that episode with the house was really the one that i thought stuck out as like super that's powerful one the, that's one of the best episodes of that yeah but again I, I i look at that like i look at the two scenes of Daredevil. So they're just extended movies, really oh, long yeah, movies. Yeah. But they're um, long form, long form storytelling yeah. with a huge overarching mm-hmm. story, but also several, yeah. like yeah. hundred almost short intermediary yeah. stories to get to the end of the. Right. And it's just masterful writing. So that's in a unanimous from all of us yeah. here. Go see Jessica Jones if you haven't. It's yeah. on Netflix. Get Netflix if you don't have it, because what are you doing if you don't? Netflix. Um, <laughs> uh, watch our movies too. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> there's a lot of um, a lot of storytelling. What am I trying to say? Like a lot of um, morals in Jessica's yeah. Jessica Jones. Like her neighbor is yeah, addicted. That kid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and oh, yeah. he ha- he Malcolm? he becomes a hero to the you know the people without powers. Right. And, this is, and, he, and, the and they kind of and they kind of cut him down on that too yeah. for doing it. Yeah. And I was so proud of him. Yeah. I was like, he literally was falling asleep while walking. Yeah. To and I'm going to corral and, a group of and people, and then come to find out that he was also being controlled right. by Kilgrave. Yeah. Well, yeah. To do, like, created an addict out of that man mm. to just further have more mm. information on on yeah. Jessica, which is just a. 
another master manipulator There's tactic. There's so much we can yeah. say. Yeah. I mean, if you really Jessica want Jones to get into the deep psyche... Dive. <laughs> So you two got, guys obviously got a lot out of Suicide Squad. Um, so every time uh, this was uh, kind of Andrew's idea, yep, every time we you. end the podcast, mm-hmm. we do a, a who would win in a fight. Ooh. Um, so you Harley got, Quinn versus Jessica Jones. Uh, Jessica Straight Jones up. absolutely <laughs> wins that fight. Harley Quinn uh, versus Jessica superpowers. Jones? Superpowers. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, know. I know Jessica Jones has powers, but they're so... Uh, they're just super. They're just super. Of. She's just kind of Supergirl, sort of. Uh, and and Harley Quinn has is ga- it's gadgets versus power yeah. essentially. And sometimes gadgets Chemicals can too. yeah. What if she just hand tasered her? <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, yeah. No. I mean that. Yeah. Jessica Jones, you could play to the kind of honorable thing because she kind of even though she's sort of a gray character mm-hmm. who dips into black not just meaning Luke Cage um, <laughs> <laughs> um, she, well, she'll never go back <laughs> well she can't no um, <laughs> by law yeah <laughs> these are the rules <laughs> um, uh, Harley Quinn could could kind of play to that too because she will she could manipulate as well yeah she's like listen we don't have to do all this and just just shocks then, the shit out of her. The next time we see Jessica Jones's face, yeah. it's the the, ah. the, the no, that's fair. crimson grin. You know, <laughs> like that'd be interesting, though. I like that. All right, mm. those are all fun. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, uh, but uh, yeah, that's a that's a wrap. Uh, that's mm. all, folks. Uh, Thanks for listening. Well, uh, it's been an honor. <laughs> all right, I'm Brian. I'm Robert. And I'm Samantha. And this has been your worst nightmare. (laughs) Good night, everybody! So, do you agree with our takes on the film, the Joker-Harley Quinn dynamic, the Harley Quinn-Jessica Jones comparison, who we think would win in a fight? Tell us, and maybe throw a follow or a like our way. On Facebook at facebook.com slash popcultureshockhc. On Twitter at pcsheadcanon. Individually, you can follow me on Twitter at yesball. Samantha across all social media at Samzig. And Brian, you could follow in the grocery store. Hit us up, let us know, and stay tuned for part two of this where we talk about everything else.